Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's session. And I'm super excited about this session because everybody cannot be an entrepreneur. Everybody can never become an entrepreneur. A country where everybody is a founder is a poor country because founders don't build companies. It is made up of uh, uh, incredible team members that a company actually gets to produce the results that we see. We see companies like Amazon that have 1 million plus employees. They don't have 1 million plus founders. They just have 1 million plus incredible employees. So today, I want to talk about how to be a successful intrapreneur if you do not want to be an entrepreneur. And this question was asked by a follower, and I decided to do this session to to, to teach because some people just desire to be different from an average employee and they don't want to own their own businesses but they want to be game changers they desire to be rock stars in, 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 in what they do so let's look at this so who is an entrepreneur who is an entrepreneur an entrepreneur is an in-house entrepreneur you can say that an entrepreneur is an in-house entrepreneur. It is, is, is that person or that employee that is proactive, who works for an institution and is excellent at creating and implementing revolutionary strategies and ideas to scale the business. An entrepreneur never leaves a department or a company the same. Yes, that's one thing about an entrepreneur. If you are that kind of a person that when you when you fit in somewhere or you are put somewhere, you are so conscious, you are so intentional that you need to create massive change, massive innovative change, then you are an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur uh, uh, always leave the company better off than when they got it or than when they were recruited. For example, and it, you come in maybe as, as a sales director and the company uh, was making maybe a um, million dollars in sales or 10 million francs in sales or 3 million naira in sales. And when you leave, after three years, that sales has do have doubled or multiple kind of, but you, you have caused incredible change in the sales numbers of, of the company. Unlike the entrepreneur who creates a new company, an entrepreneur or the entrepreneur works within an existing organization and is always very intentional and looking for new opportunities that could lead to the development of new products, new services, new business opportunities, new processes, new market. They are always very conscious. Their minds are always full of where can I find new opportunities that can lead to the development of new product services, business opportunities, uh, in new markets, and, and so on. Therefore, entrepreneurship is not a position. You must not be uh, the head of marketing. You must not be the head of finance. You must not be the head of the R&D department to be called an entrepreneur, no. It is a way of working. It is a mindset. It is a lifestyle of, of working. So how can you become an entrepreneur? How can you become an entrepreneur? How can you become that a high valued employee that is so incredible at driving change within the company? Number one is you can become an entrepreneur by having this growth mindset and you love to learn. Growth mindset means that you believe that you can always be better. You believe that you can train yourself to become better. And that's why you like learning. You learn to challenge yourself, to upskill yourself, to reskill yourself. Number two is that you are internally motivated. You don't need somebody to inspire you or motivate you to get results. You don't need somebody to wake you up from bed. You don't need somebody to keep telling you come to work on time. You don't need, you are internally motivated towards your work and towards the vision of the company. Number three is develop the habit of toggling 
tackling specific challenges to improve. Yes, you have this knack, you have this consistent habit of always looking at what are the specific challenges in this case? What are the specific challenges in this department? What are the specific challenges in this process? And how can you improve these challenges? You're always looking at the specific challenges and you improve these challenges. Number four is you develop the attitude of experimenting the unknown, yes. Because you recognize that exploring many different options, exploring many uh, different parts is necessary to produce innovative breakthroughs. As an entrepreneur, you need to produce innovative products, innovative processes, innovative systems, and, 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 and find incredible opportunities. And you cannot do this by expecting to be right all the time or expecting to be right at your first try. So you need to have this attitude of experimenting the unknown to be sure that you know the various options and always pick out the best option. Number five is you solve problems and you provide value. You solve problems and provide value. You're always looking for ways to actively improve service or save the company some time or minimize cost or save the company money and increase revenue, right? These are fundamental problems that as an entrepreneur, you should be solving for your business. You're always solving problems and providing value. Number six is you believe in yourself. You believe in yourself. If you do not believe in yourself, when working for an innovative project, your colleagues and senior management will not believe in you. Yes, because when you embark on something new that is innovative, you need to challenge your colleague. You need to inspire your colleague to join, to, to join you or to assist you in producing this breakthrough product or this breakthrough process. But if you don't believe in yourself, you are not conscious that this can work, nobody will believe in you. Secondly, your top management will not believe in you and they, will not, they may not give you the money you need to carry out the various experiments, to carry out the various research, to be sure that what they're doing works. So the way you pitch your new ideas, your new products, your new innovative concepts to top management is powerful. You need to believe in yourself that it's gonna work and even if it doesn't work, the company is going to get value because the company will learn new ways that a particular project cannot work and that will increase chances of having a more successful uh, uh, product. So I think it's important to talk about elements in an institution that promote entrepreneurship. Why is this important? Because if you are an entrepreneur in a company that do not promote the culture of entrepreneurship, you'll be a frustrated entrepreneur. So you need to be in an environment that they accept the culture of entrepreneurship. And if 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 you if you if you if you're you are following this and you're an entrepreneur that you find you 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 find it difficult to be that kind of or to operate at your best because your current organization do not promote um, um, innovation or entrepreneurship. Maybe you can find ways and, and go teach or go share uh, with, with your people. Number one, the company culture that is conducive to pursue opportunities. Yes, this is a very important element for entrepreneurs to succeed in an organization. There should be an intentional company culture that promotes uh, uh, um, um, the pursuit of opportunities. Number two is intentionally equipping the staff to be entrepreneurial, yes. You can hire experts. I, I have led trainings in, in companies or in NGOs, uh, uh, even local organizations, where the purpose was to train the staff on critical thinking, problem solving, and so on, or teaching the staff how to be innovative in the workplace. So it, it is a very important element in promoting the culture of, of, of entrepreneurship, where senior management can intentionally um, invest in equipping the staff to be entrepreneurial. Number three is creating and funding a research and development department. Yes, where the, the institution can decide to intentionally create a department where they're, they're going to focus on researching new ideas, developing these ideas, experimenting them, and turning them to actual products. 
for the company to market. Number four is top management support. Yes, if the top management do not support innovation, the top management do not support entrepreneurship, the top management do not, if the top management is, is made of jealous people who are afraid that they are, they are subordinates or their team member who perform better than them, uh, entrepreneurship will not succeed. But when top management is open to support innovation, suggestions, recommendations, and accept new things, the culture of entrepreneurship will be successful. The next is uh, um, the vision of disruption and brand leadership. Yes, if the company has this vision to push for disruption, to, 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 to lead in their sector or in the industry or to become brand leaders in their sector, then the culture of entrepreneurship will be very powerful and they will intentionally invest in uh, um, raising entrepreneurs who can help them to be disruptors in their sectors and to be brand leaders in their various industries. To conclude, to conclude, entrepreneurs believe that no matter what it takes, it is their responsibility to add value to the organization or to the company or to the department. Entrepreneurs believe that no matter what it takes, it is their responsibility to add to, to add value to the organization, to the company, to the department. Thank you so much for following this session. I hope you grab some value and let's connect on WhatsApp, on, through email, I'm visiting our website, charmingjoyby.com, and there are over 600 plus articles on business, entrepreneurship, innovation, productivity, and so on. And we can come to your institution and train your staff on how to develop this incredible, incredible culture of entrepreneurship that leads to brand leadership, innovation, productivity, profitability, and much more. Remember to subscribe if you are listening to this through our YouTube channel. Subscribe and please do share. And do leave us a question and comment where you are watching from. And we could connect. Maybe I may be in your town or your city or your country in the next few weeks or months. Cheers.